Hello, everyone, and welcome to Weaver Birds Live TV with me, Karen Weaver, and Emma Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a mirror image of where I need to point, and it's like, there she is. <laughs> You're doing well, well. this. I know it is that, isn't it? Well, we have a guest coming in today, um, and she's in Melbourne, Australia. Hopefully, she's able to join us because it's like three hours ahead of me, and it's kind of 7 p.m. at night here with me. So we'll see if she comes. If not, she can come again. But um, it's always awesome to jump on and do our TV segment on, on a Wednesday. We're doing it on hump day now, so we're here to get you over the hump. <laughs> hump of the week, we're here to carry you through. <laughs> Oh, there's Naomi in the backstage. Hello, Naomi. We're going to bring you up in a few minutes. <laughs> but yes, so Emma, there's always lots happening. I believe that yesterday was a special day for you. Can you share? Oh, yes. Well, yesterday was my last um, full day with Inspire. That was me um, with my boxes in the back of the car driving down the road. Um, just I suppose reflecting. I went out for lunch with a couple of the girls and um, just kind of ended it or evening actually it was ended it um that kind of a way. So yeah, onwards and upwards from here. Exciting times. And you know, there's been lots of different yeah. things happening this week with people getting in touch. And I, you know, without getting too heavy into it, honest to goodness, I'm like the universe is telling me you're on the right path. Keep mm -hmm. going, keep going. So there's not even one seed of doubt in my mind. Can you believe it? There's not even a thought of oh my goodness or anything like that it's like yeah let's do this yeah. watch what comes next and no knowing me and emma like all of our lives i'm a really big risk taker but i always get the fruit so you know i always get the rewards because i kind of know what i need to do but emma doesn't take those types of risks you know you like <laughs> the, the the thing that you know you, you've been working 22 years in the same kind of you know in the same industry where you had your paychecks and you were guaranteed your income and all that kind of stuff and and but you were driving to to work and back and really you know being very much in, entrenched in mental health for 22 years now that's a, a long and a huge <laughs> kudos to you because I know what you have done over those years I have worked in some of the daycare centers we worked together in a few daycare centers and i worked in mental health for about four years and all the albeit i was in the offices and you were out doing the hard work <laughs> but, um, but isn't it amazing um how you know time can change and how your priorities can change and how you see that you've actually gone on a mission haven't you whenever you yeah. become mission based something bigger than yourself takes over and you go into autopilot and you just have to trust in the faith that you are, are moving forward. So you have now left your paid employment, but you know that there's so much more out there and you can do have more impact going forward. Am I right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I mean, once it, that came to me, once mental wealth came to me and see even the reception that it has received. And as you're, you're right in what you're saying, it's, I don't want to say it's like a calling, but it's just, I, it's not going away. That's what it is for me. I'm really driven by it. And you're right, it's bigger than me. It has to be done. And there's so many people already, believe it or not, but so many more people um coming forward that are really going to um get supported from this. It's going to be amazing. And look at Mental Wealth International one year like one year you know and look what's <laughs> happened already like it's it's like an organization that has been around for five years you know you've yeah. really got really well established really early on of course you know having a sister that's you know an entrepreneur <laughs> is, you know it's always a bonus but you know you've really well established yourself in one year it's really impressive yeah. so huge i've definitely been you. driving it forward and getting the message out there so it's it's working and it's all good so yeah what do we do even the transition the, the yeah. mindset transition is was huge and you've just done it like super speed <laughs> <laughs> it all just clicked that actually is a thing it all just clicked that's it that is it and and that's what happens whenever something calls bigger than and and you're going whoa goodness that's mm -hmm. different but there's something really big in that and it's calling loud so i'm gonna have to listen yeah. so from my end i finished writing a book and it's launching Yay! on friday <laughs> like you know it's like 
I don't ever recommend that anybody just finishes a book and gets it to your editor and get publishes it the same week. Don't ever do that, people. Just don't do it. Leave me <laughs> to do those insane things. But, you know, I may not have a book in my hands on Friday, but um, we're going to bring all the authors in the book together, you know, the contributors, and we're going to um, celebrate the law of love on Friday, which it's actually editor finished and it's off to my typesetter. So I could have a book in <laughs> <laughs> you never know but it's all, um, that's this, your way that's how you vibe <laughs> it's how i roll it's the 22 i had to launch yeah. it on the 22 so i'm honoring that um and you know the next one could be next month i'll let you know but once all seven are out that's when things um really ramp up and really get fun but to to be in the essence of love oh my god it's as if you can just feel the energy and the vibration and uplifting and healing and everything that's been happening since I've been writing this over the past few weeks is phenomenal. It's just like blows my 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 socks off. That's the truth. And um, and you get into that energy and, and what, what it makes happen in your life and then in other people's lives around you. And you're going, OK, this is the vibe that I'm going to hang out in for a while. <laughs> and then you're yeah, going from love to gratitude you know and and so we carry it on so it, it's really special and fun um, and yeah. and i love the cover of the law of love i love it's that very too. striking it's really Isn't striking it? the colors is real very i thought it was lovely yeah it's beautiful so hopefully it goes out there and reaches the hearts and minds of anyone who needs who needs it um and just ignite something within within them to see that love is always the answer that yeah. there's always the best solution where there is love. Um, and that's when you inject that into something, it's always um, magnificent. That's so lovely. enough about us, Emma, mm -hmm. <laughs> and our mm -hmm. callings. We are going to bring up the amazing Naomi Friars. And guys, you are going to fall in love with this author of mine, but she's also on a mission. Um, yeah. And it's so... Um, I think we both can connect with with what Naomi's saying because it's just such a special message. So welcome, Naomi. Hey. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, but hi. also, <laughs> hello. It's never enough of you two ladies. I was just sitting here <laughs> smiling the whole time. Like, yeah, you guys are ace. <laughs> Thank you for having uh, me. We have so much fun. And thank you for staying up late for us because we know you were on a podcast last night. You have been a busy lady this past few weeks, haven't you? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have. Can you share can you share with everybody why? Because what happened um last week and um it was just phenomenal, you know, launch and share it with everybody about your book. Yeah, so finally after three years in the making and planning and some U-turns and some crazy pit stops along the way and all the things <laughs> I got to release um, my debut memoir which is a very long way um, and it's based on my lived experience of overcoming mental health challenges um, yes. some of the proceeds 50% of sales revenue is going towards the black dog and it talks a lot about um, yeah my journey through and coming out the other side so yeah. it's been it's, it's, it's been a wild ride <laughs> It is, but sure, it, so is any worthwhile journey, Naomi, you know, because, you know, whenever you, like you are laying it bare and, and you're creating amazing conversations around the launch of your book, but people go on a journey with you and they go, wow, this is one strong woman, what she has um, come through and it ignites something within people. And that's what you want as an author, isn't it? I know that's what I want as an author and Emma. We, you know, we want to ignite something within people so that their lives are a little better or they feel hope, more hope or supported or something like that. Is that your, you know, and, and as you said, we just didn't catch it. There was the Black Dog Institute that you are raising funds for through this project. Yeah. And even one of the things I thought um, about like circumventing lessons along the way from the challenge, um, just with little things and trip, um, tip. <laughs> oh, sorry, it is Lady Melbourne. <laughs> I'm losing my words, but um, tips and tricks was what I was trying to say um, of yeah. what I learned and like being able to share those as well with people who may be struggling, you know, it's really okay. important. And let's face it, you're in Melbourne, okay? You're in the most locked down city in the whole wide world. And you're still smiling, you know. <laughs> this has kept, 
kept you occupied, hasn't it? Oh, it has. And in some ways it's been a blessing and I'm still counting my blessings. But I think we're, we've, we've broken the world record for lockdown. So it's over 250 days. And, and, and other states really don't. I don't think people understand like what it's like to have a curfew. Like you run out of milk and you're like, I'm done. Like yeah. I have to just go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> and um, even just the 5K radius and stuff. I was actually talking on the podcast last night about like how it can be psychologically quite difficult for people who are already struggling that feeling of like entrapment or you know extra layers of legislative barriers or whatever um so yeah that was interesting but yeah do you know what uh, Naomi me and Emma both understand this because we grew up and we both understand this you know if when you're told you're not allowed to do something you want to do it even more don't you it niggles there at the back of your mind <laughs> and you will it, you you just can't you're going wow I'm being told I'm not allowed to do it it just makes me want to do it even more you know it's like it's it's you know it's just human well, nature really you know, your freedom is one of your you know most fundamental rights that you hold dear to yourself and it's one of the things that you need to keep yourself well isn't it you know that that feeling of freedom and when you take that away you that certainly can bring up a lot of challenges it can also trigger things for people which i would have found a lot here with people that we were supporting you know it was triggering a lot of things and then interestingly some of the people that we support here were delighted because if they had like a social anxiety or something like that they're like yeah that's it i am on it i don't have to go anywhere there's no pressure i'm staying at home yeah. there's been perks for sure <laughs> yeah it is isn't it so we haven't told everybody the name of your book it's called a very long way it was a long way when it came to me and then it turned into a very <laughs> long way and it really lived and, up to that name <laughs> in but, so many but you're ways. phenomenal Naomi what like share with us and our audience some of the things that you've come through like you had a nervous breakdown and at what age uh, you know what? It's so odd when you when you do have a nervous breakdown and your recovery is as long as mine, you really lose track of time. So I'm still trying to work out whether I was 25 or 26 when it happened. And I still, to this day, get confused about how old I am because I lost so much time. Yeah. And, and the other thing is like really random little things like technology advances while you're unwell. So then you realise there's new channels and you have to learn how to use like different Foxtels and that's all, there's all these really weird nuances yeah. I'm still getting my head around. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I did. I had a nervous breakdown um, in my 20s and just coming out, out the other side of that was a massive, you know, challenge. Um, you even had to learn how to speak again, didn't you? Yeah, so... I could speak, but not sentences. So I could get a few words out, but they were very pressured. Um, and I, I wasn't, I couldn't articulate myself. I couldn't have like a, a very good, com, like discussion, like a conversation. Mm. It was quite stunted. It's amazing, isn't it? And it just goes to show how, you know, resilient and how whenever you're focused on healing and, and growing and evolving through it, anything can, can happen because you have um, you know like i i've known you now for what three four years and and how i've watched your growth and connected with you like i whenever we get on a call together i come off and i feel great like we just bounce off each other so well we have really good energy together and things like that and so to get to that space when there's been so much adverse you know so many things against you to get to there like it's it's just phenomenal Oh, thank you. I think you guys are pretty phenomenal in your own rights too, to be honest. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just roll with it. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you. <laughs> we, we just, do you know what it is? It's just we just hang out and enjoy and we prioritise it, I think, isn't it? And we we love what we do and you find it. And, and you have found that mission in you, that fuel that that helps you to, to help others in, in life. And that fills your cup, I think, doesn't it? Whenever you know you're on a purpose. And what you're doing is something you're called to do. It's just, you know, there's nothing going to stop you. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that um, gratitude for knowing your, like the, the meaning, I guess. I think it's really interesting, you know, um, because as a little girl, I was a writer and then I kind of lost yes. sight of the journey. And, um, and I spent so long like thinking like who or what am I like what, what am I like and looking for the purpose or the meaning but like I'd had it since I was 
little kids. Yes. Absolutely. And they do say that, that if if you um, are, are, you know, you don't know what your purpose is to go back to what you enjoy doing when you were 10 or 11. Yeah. Apparently, that's where it is. That's where the, the joy is if you really enjoyed something. But you know what? Um, I've had a period of mental illness in my my lifetime. You know, it doesn't have to define your lifetime, but it do, it can help others move forward with with the, theirs because some people can get entrenched in it and stuck there for a lifetime and not can't move forward through it or or from it but when we share our stories it gives insights it, it helps people connect and it also um helps people with solutions and maybe seeing the light at the end of the tunnel because there's hope there isn't it yeah getting to reframe the narrative and choose your own ending is pretty empowering um, but also I think there's, you know, there is, I, I do think there's an element of luck. Like I was talking last night um, about how my new doctor that I've had, oh, well, she's not new to me anymore, but I've had her for four years um, and how her approach to psychiatry was so different to all her predecessors and how she just changed my life because she told me that it was like a physical injury, my rehabilitation in terms of like what I put in, I would get back out. And yes. I'd never heard that before. I didn't have that reason for hope. So I just made it my mission and that was really empowering. It gives you your power back, doesn't it? Because you feel powerless, yeah. you know, isn't it? That empowerment is like look, that simple, that simple comment, that simple, you know, gift of knowledge from her has changed your life really, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, she's, she's done a million little things, but they've really made a massive difference. Yeah. So what's next for Naomi Fryers? I know that we're still on this big turn. You're everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, Emma, I swear. She's in the US. I've been watching she's Naomi. The... Sure, I've been messaging away at her because we had the pleasure of meeting a couple of times over Zoom. So we've had lovely conversations about all of this and see to be watching it all come into fruition. And especially when it's something that I don't know what you're talking about. It's absolutely amazing. Like you've done so well. And I don't, it's going to be hard to know if you'll ever realise the enormity of what you've achieved because obviously that's not what it's about but the amount of people that you have impacted on is just going to be unreal yeah, oh, that's very so nice i have to say um you know like and that and that's that was the mission but it did get quite creepy of feeling like i was everywhere the other week when i was scrolling <laughs> instagram and saw myself <laughs> And I'm like, omnipresence is called Naomi. It's called an <laughs> omnipresence. You got to embrace it. When you're omnipresent, that's what you want. That's it. You're going for gold. That's you know? what happens. <laughs> it was um, so weird. <laughs> so so yeah, you are, that. yeah, you are an amazing author. You really are an ama well, amazing writer and so creative. And I love your brain. Like how your brain thinks is just amazing. So what is what is coming next? For Naomi Fryers, is there another project brewing? I think there might be a few. Yeah. <laughs> <That happens. laughs> um, um, your girls are really shaping me. <laughs> if, I hang, if I hang around you long enough, the magic's just rubbing off. <laughs> yeah, that's what um, we hope for. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a picture story book will be very fun. Um, so yes. we're working on the world according to Ted. Uh, which is who is Ted? Son. Yeah, yeah, my little boy, and um, it'll be a celebration of neurodiversity and out of the box thinking. That one. Um, also, I'm looking at um, like a kind building like an incubator that champions writers um, with lived experience and from diverse backgrounds and have um, disabilities as well, yeah. um, because I think there's a lot of important stories. That probably are inaccessible by traditional media as well um yeah. and then and then also i'm on a bit of a mission <laughs> to drive down um yeah the suicide rate in australia i just yeah. i want to make a difference in systemic policy somehow but i haven't quite figured out how you will well you set the intention <laughs> and the opportunity will find its way to you and you just need to have the courage and you do have the courage to action it all the way we are with you watching and I, we can't wait to come back in the show whenever you you know you have these breakthroughs it's going to be amazing naomi fryers thank you so much for joining us you are an amazing human and it's a delight to be on your journey with you it's been a delight seeing you both thanks for having me thank you my have a good night okay get to bed <laughs> <laughs> see you guys
Isn't she amazing, Emma? Oh, uh, uh, Karen, do you know when you just meet people and, you know, whenever we would have had a couple of Zooms just chatting about stuff or whatever, and you just know, um, you know, even after everything that Naomi has came through, and she has came through it, um, to have that drive and that heart, there's a lot of heart there, to have that heart to think, I don't want anybody to feel like this, or maybe I can help someone. And as she says, she's put the tips and tools as well that might work for other people. So she's being that beacon of hope, yeah. saying, try this, this is what worked for me and stuff. So it's lovely. Oh, absolutely. And um, I can see you and her collaborating on something, um, yeah. definitely, um, you know, because... There's a lot of alignment people, there, you know, and yeah, a lot thought of alignment. processes and, yeah. Values and values alignment as well. And whenever that happens and two minds get together, something very mm -hmm. powerful happens. Exciting. Oh. Watch this space, people. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first. At Weaver Birds Live TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh everyone thank you so much um for joining us next week i don't know who we have for a guest but hopefully i'll have a book in my hand. <laughs> you'll have a book in your hand we might have another irish person on as well so watch this yes place. that would be amazing i love meeting we love meeting people from each other's networks and yes. that's the thing and just make, bringing them into the family that is it yes okay everyone thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time next week same time, same place. Bye. Bye.